Okay. Hi, everyone coming on in. There we go. Um, hope everyone is having a really good blessed day. Um, Y'all already know what the deal is. It is already 530. So we're going to go ahead and get into the word. If you have your word with you we're going to be in romans 3 so if you've really been needing some encouragement on just understanding how faithful god is just stay t um, tuned today and just have an open heart today because it's really going to open your eyes a little bit more to how you can trust god and just really depend on god throughout your everyday life so um as always we're going to go ahead and get started with prayer and then we're going to hop right into the bible study so let's go ahead and pray <clears throat> dear heavenly father we just want to thank you lord Thank you, Lord, for this day, God, that you've just surrounded us with your with your arms, God, with your wings, God, and you just keep us protected, God. You just always watch out for us, God. You've created us, God, in this world, and you did not leave us, God, to fend for ourselves. You didn't leave us, God, to figure it out. But Father, you want to walk us through every step of the way, and we appreciate that so much because, God, we've given you so many reasons to first off walk away. We've given you so many reasons, God, to burn this world down. But Father, you have still have sold just so much grace in your heart for us, God, and we thank you, and I pray that today we will not take that for granted i pray that today god that we will understand more about your nature we will understand more about who you are god and why we should follow you and why we should trust in you god and to know that you will never leave us nor forsake us that father you are faithful even when no one else is so father i pray that today you will open up the hearts and the minds of everyone who is listening and i pray father that you will allow the holy spirit to come into this place come into my heart come into this live god just every person who is going to even even be on this live. I pray that the Holy Spirit, God, just come through the screen and they would just feel your presence, God. That's all they need to feel is to know your word, God, and feel your presence. And I pray that people be changed today, God. People's lives are brought back to you, Father. And I pray that we will all go out and be purposeful and useful, God, with our lives as we go out and live the rest of our days. I pray, God, that you'll forgive us of any sins and help our hearts and our minds to be focused on you in this time. It is in Jesus' mighty name that I pray. Amen. All right, you guys, let's get started. So we're going to be in Romans 3 and we're going to be talking about God remains faithful. God is going to remain really faithful. So uh, we're going to be looking at verse 1 through 3 and we're going to just read it. And then, of course, as we always do, go ahead and talk about it. Um, so let's go ahead and read. It says, it says, then what's the advantage of being a Jew? Is there any value in the ceremony of circumcision? Yes, there is. There are great benefits. First off, first of all, the Jews were entrusted with the whole revelation of God. True, some of them were unfaithful, but just because they were unfaithful, does that mean God will be unfaithful? And so we have to understand this. A lot of times we get so caught up in, oh, this person looks so religious. Oh, this person looks so sold out for Christ. Oh, this person is claiming to be Christian. This person is claiming to be with God. And we're here careful. How are they acting? Because a lot of times when you can see how they act with God and you can pretty much all the time see how they're going to act with you you can see if they're going to be faithful to you if they're not if they can't be faithful to God it's going to be really difficult for them to hold their promises with you and so a lot of people don't want anything to do with God because we as God's representatives we as those who hold his name we as those who are saying okay we that is our father he we are his children we have allowed that to kind of abuse his name in a sense and say put Jesus name on everything when his name shouldn't even be attached to it in the first place and so now when people hear this powerful name this is how the devil has worked he has been working and working trying to diminish and make it seem like the name isn't powerful so people use it as curse words people use it in a way that is derogatory that is not good they use it in a way that does not seem like it has power like it's meaningless but it is something that is powerful so we have to understand that when we're trying to look at people or even as people are looking at us to be an example of Christ we have to remain faithful to our promises we have to remain faithful to our discipline habits to our obedience to God because people are looking and people want God and they're going to look to you to see how that looks now should they be doing that I'm not saying they should but if people do you want them to see God God in a negative way and say hmm 
If a human being is saying they're with God and they're doing this to me, that means God is going to do the same thing when that is not the case at all. So we want to be leading people correctly. Now let's go on to verse four. Verse four says, um, of course not. Even if everyone else is a liar, God is true. God is true. That means if you hear something else that does not line up with the word of God, believe the word of God over that. Believe the word of God over anything that sounds good to your ears because you know that God is true. As the scriptures say about him, <clears throat> you will be proved right in what you say and you will win your case in court because now we have the true fulfilled word of God. Things of prophecies that have already been fulfilled and are being fulfilled as we speak in this moment. And so if you're finding it really, really difficult to follow Christ right now because of what someone has said to you, whether or not it was helpful or not, whether or not it was to help sanctify you or not, you have to understand that if they gave off any hate, any malicious behavior, any anger, anything that was evil, dirty language, all of that, you have to understand that is not from God. I have to tell you again, that is not from God. If someone is claiming to be of God and doing all these things, you have to understand they may be in a weak moment. They may be struggling with something. I'm not saying they're not with God, but they may be struggling with something. Do not associate that with God and say, well, since you're going to treat me like that, I'm running away from God. No, God isn't like that. So this is what you do in those moments. You pray for them and you allow God's hand to move in their hearts because you see it's something they need help with. And as you start to pray for them and you start to see God moving in their hearts, your faith increases. They're getting better. And it's not just you thinking, oh, I ain't going to ever mess with them again. Oh, I ain't going to ever talk to them again. But you're in a new state of mind of forgiveness, of mercy and of grace. And you're like, if no one else is going to help you, I'm not just going to talk about you. I'm going to pray for you and try to help you so that you can be changed. Or what, what good is it going to do for me to talk about you and not pray for you and not actually ask God to come in in your life? So that is our job. We understand that those things God's are, God is trying to stop. God is trying to stop that anger. He's trying to stop that evilness from coming from people. That's ultimately what he's trying to do through us. Now, let's go on to verse five to eight. It says, <clears throat> But some might say our sinfulness serves a good purpose for it helps people see how righteous God is. Isn't it unfair then for him to punish us? Now this it says in parentheses, this is merely a human point of view. Verse six, of course not. If God were not entirely fair, how would he be qualified to judge the world? But someone might still argue, how can God condemn me as a sinner if my dishonesty highlights his truthfulness and, be, and brings him more glory? And some people even slander us by claiming that we say, the more we sin, the better it is. Those who say such things deserve to be condemned because those are lies spewing from the enemy. And we have to understand this about God and God gave me this revelation um, about two days ago because I was literally thinking man why why is it that we have this sinful nature in us why is it that we try to do right but it doesn't work even Paul talked about it. he was like I'm trying to do right but it just isn't working I'm trying every time I want to do right I always do wrong but we I, I was asking I was like God what what is it so it, it God put on my heart um, verse 6 uh, Genesis 1 verse 26 and so this is going to be a key point in understanding how you're going to need to tackle this sinful nature it tells us then God said let's make human beings in our image to be like us so I was like hmm so God when we when we ask God why did he create us in this way why are we moving in the way that we're moving we have to say okay he created us to be like him. So then it makes us wonder, man, this sinful nature is strong. If it's so strong and it feels so natural, God, why are you telling me not to do it? God, why are you pulling me away from something that you even put in me that you created me to be like? But y'all, this right here is going to make you have a greater appreciation and a greater love for God. When I tell you this right here, we will understand that even though we're made in his likeness, that means God has a choice, just like we have a choice. He has a choice to either choose to do evil, choose to do bad, choose to hurt people because he has all the power in his hands. He's more powerful than the devil or any other being that you could ever think of. He has all the power in his hands to do evil. Yet he chooses to do good. He chooses to do good. So when he's telling us, hey, I've given you my same nature. 
You got choices. You could choose this or you could choose that. But we understand that, okay, God wants me to walk like him. He, even though he's given me his nature, remember God is perfect. God is not tempted to do evil, nor has he ever done evil, nor will he ever tempt anyone to do evil. So we understand, okay, if God is made in our, if we're made in God's image and God isn't even tempted to do evil, we have to ask ourselves, hmm, why is God not tempted to do evil? What is, what is his reasoning or logic behind that? And we look at it. God is understanding what happens when you sin. He's looking at the consequence of the sin. He's saying that is not desirable for me. God is looking long term while we in our flesh look for short term pleasure. So we have to get or remove ourselves from the short term pleasure and say, let me think about it like my father in heaven. I was created in his image. And therefore, if I want to be where he is, if I want to be like him, let me imitate him. It tells us that in Ephesians 5, imitate God, therefore, in everything that you do. Be, um, uh, as your father in heaven is pure, you be pure as well. It tells us that also. So we know that, okay, man, I can have a greater appreciation for God because he is choosing. He's choosing to do good. He is choosing to not sin. He is choosing to treat us right. He's choosing to be graceful towards us. So we have to say, okay, let me take a step back. Let me humble myself and understand, man, I deserve to be condemned. I deserve to go to hell. I deserve every punishment that I get. But God in his grace, God in his mercy protects us and he he allows and says okay look i'm not just gonna make you and then leave you i'm gonna give you an example i'm gonna give you an advocate which is christ he's saying follow christ follow everything that he says christ tells us it is a wise person who listens and follows the teachings of jesus it is a fool who doesn't obey it who listens to it but doesn't obey it those who try to listen to the word and not do any action with it it's like it's useless it's not doing anything good and so let's go on to verse nine. Verse nine says, um, and the, the beginning of this, it says, all people are sinners. Well, then should we conclude that we Jews are better than others? No, not at all. For we have already shown that all people, whether Jew or Gentile, are under the power of sin. Man, people try to put their identity in so much stuff. You try to put it in being black. You try to put it in your sexuality. You try to put it in your nationality, your job, your income, whatever the case is. You're trying to put your identity in something. But God is saying none of that has any value because we are all, whether Jew or Gentile, whether white or black, whether Hispanic or, or Asian, whatever the case is, we all fall under this sinful nature and we all need saving. It doesn't matter if you have a lot of money. It doesn't matter if you're poor. We're all destined for the same place if we don't have Jesus. We're all going to die and be put into the grave if we don't change or we're just all just being human. We're all going to die and be put into a grave. We will all have to face God on judgment day and he's going to ask us what did you do with the life that I gave you? How were you useful to my kingdom? Were you living in vain or were you living to please me? Were you living to live for others or were you living to live only for yourself. You are going to be asked these questions and we need to have answers and we need to be prepared in a sense of saying, okay, God, you've given me this time out of your grace and your mercy. You didn't have to save me. You didn't have to give me your life. You didn't have to give up your life because you could have got up in heaven all by yourself, but you gave it to me. And so we got to say, okay, let me be proactive while I'm here on this earth. We know that we don't have many days on this earth. We know that there are so many people who need help. It says the harvest is plenty, but the labor are few. So we know that we are the ones who need to go out and labor. This is not just a time for you to get things for yourself. This is a time for you to go out and minister to others. When you intake the word, you give it to others. It's not just you eat and you keep it all to yourself. No, you eat and you share. You, you get and you give. That is how God works and that is how we're supposed to work. God isn't stingy with any of his blessings. He's not stingy with anything that he has in heaven, but he is quick to give it to us. He is quick to bless us. So let us walk in that same obedience. Now let's go on to verse 10 through 12. Now this is going to be so key if you're not walking in purpose, if you're not walking the way God called you to walk. It tells us as script, as the scriptures say, no one is righteous, not even one. That means no one could get into heaven on their own. No one could do it on their own. Everyone has sinned. Everyone has fallen short. And it continues. No one is truly wise. No one is seeking God. It was telling us in the scriptures, not nobody's doing this. So Jesus said, man, no one is wanting to be a part of the heavens anymore. Let me come down to them. Let me, let me stop trying to make them come up to me. Let me step down and come down to them and let me show them what true love feels like. Let me show them what it'll be like when they get in heaven. And so 
when you experience that here on this earth, you will understand that it'll be a, an, an unimaginable state when you get up in heaven. So we have to trust that even the love that Jesus showed here is going to be the same in heaven. Now, let's keep reading. It says, now listen to this. All have turned away. All have become useless. All have turned away from God. All have turned to their own desires. All have turned to things that look good, that the world tells you you need to chase. All have turned to the money. All have turned to the girls, the men, the relationships. All have turned to just looking good. All have turned to things away from God. But we have to understand that if we don't, if we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing on this earth, we are useless. If we're not doing what God called us to do, we are useless. Not what your mama said you need to be doing. Not what your dad said you need to be doing. Not what your husband or wife. If God said you should be doing something, you need to do it. Otherwise, you are useless to his kingdom. It's like this example. Let's say you get a brand new car. This car has just got everything that you want. It got brand new rims. The whole outside is just so beautiful. It's the exact color. The exact. It's just so clean on the outside. Then you even look inside the car. You got the leather seats. You got the beautiful interior, the touch screen, whatever you want in this car is is there. Now you open up the hood though. There is something wrong with the engine. The engine is something just, it just won't turn. It just won't move. So now even though you got this beautiful car, everything looks so beautiful on the outside. What's on the inside is causing it to not move. What's on the inside is causing it to be useless. It doesn't matter how pretty it looks on the outside. If it cannot function in the way it was intended to function, it is useless. Same thing with our souls. If we were created for a certain reason for God and we're not walking in that, we are deemed as useless. Understand that there are so many people who shame the name of Christ and it is up to us for us to stand up for him and understand that God has put a purpose. If you don't know your purpose in life, I can tell you what it is right now. We look at how Christ lived. His life was to give love and he gave his life. Christ didn't even have a, a place to lay his head. Christ had to go around and go to different towns. He never even had a stable home. He, he rode on a donkey. Other kings and them were riding on horses. Christ didn't have all these things that people were so so hard for spend all their time money and energy trying to achieve he said I didn't even have all of that but Christ knew where his treasures were he knew where he was building his treasures which were in heaven so let me ask you now where are you building your treasures where are where does your heart lie because there your treasures also lie where are you seeking where are you following because then I promise you you will see what you're you'll, you'll begin to build in that so let us refocus our mind and say man I'm not doing good. It continues to read. No one does good. Not a single one. When you're following your own desire, it does no good to the kingdom of God. It does absolutely no good. It does. It does. It feels good to you, though. But does it do good? There's a difference in feeling good and doing good. There are two different things. Now, let's go on to verse 13 through 16. <clears throat> It reads, their talk is foul, like a stench from an open grave. Their tongues are filled with lies. Snake venom drips from their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. They rush to commit murder. Destruction and misery always follow them. Y'all, I have heard so many people. I've seen so many people have testimonies. They have been delivered from so many things. But let me tell you this. You look at all the things that they were going through. They had destruction. They had misery in their past life when they were still living away from Christ. The moment they stepped in the light, the moment they looked at Christ, they were made new. All the, the destruction and misery they had that was caused from their sin was no longer there. So that, that brings two and two together. Okay. When Jesus was healing all these people, they had misery. A lot of people were sick. A lot of people were dealing with demons. We look at them, but the moment they encountered Jesus, all of that went away. All the destruction that it was causing in their life went away. All the misery that they had in their life went away. So we put two and two together. We say, okay, that means if I follow Christ, then the destruction and the misery will not follow me. If I follow sin, destruction and misery follow me. There has been so many people where, where God has had to remove his hand off people. God has had to punish people people we see in the old testament where kings were so disobedient to god they were so rebellious against god and god had given them all the things that they wanted in this world but they continued to do their own desire they got prideful and they went against god and god let everything happen to them he let he he took his hand off of him now it tells us god doesn't do evil god doesn't cause any of that stuff to happen let's be clear god is not the one doing it but he will allow the enemy to come in now he has he has had to remove some society 
anxieties. He's had to wipe the whole face of the earth at one point in time, but he said he would never do that again. And, and now it's up to us. We got to say, okay, do we want the results of the enemy or do we want the results of the father? Now let's look at the results of the father in verse 17 through 18. It says, they don't know where to find peace. They have no fear of God at all. They don't know where to find peace. They have no fear of God at all. The reason you can't find peace in your life, the reason you are so miserable, you're so worried, you're so depressed, you're so anxious because you don't have the fear of God in your life. You don't have God as the one who you're afraid of. You're so afraid of humans, that's why you're so worried because you're not truly afraid of the one who could actually harm you. You're not afraid of the one who could actually bring you up and love on you. You're not afraid of the true king, of the one who holds all power in his hands. And so now when you're, you're not not worried about the right one you can be fearful but when you have the most powerful being in all creation on your side oh how much peace do you have oh how much joy do you have because you realize I ain't got to worry about nothing I have no need to stress because I know that when this powerful being which is God Jesus Christ has told me how to live I know I can trust him you'll find peace in trusting him you'll find peace in every action that you take from him whether or not you are suffering there's a there's a difference between between misery you don't have to have misery while you're suffering you can be as joyful as can be while you're suffering you can be as 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 peaceful as can be while you're suffering so understand this you don't have to be destroyed while you're suffering so the devil will make you think oh you're going through a suffering state of mind right now oh that that's just God doing it to you no 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 God is not tempted to do evil nor does he tempt anyone to do evil all the evil things that you're falling into understand that is not from God that is from the enemy but it's because you have walked out of God's will you have walked outside of his hand and so now the protection he was trying to keep you from he you you just said God I don't want your protection I want to do my own will which leads to destruction and it leads to misery so we have to get back right with God and say okay God I want to have a fear of you I want your peace in my life so many people they're getting all this money the fame everything to find peace and they end up losing it even more so what are you chasing are you just truly trying to find peace or are you trying to find the the material things of this world hoping it can give you peace because I can tell you now you won't find peace in getting a new car you won't find peace in getting a new house a new job a new career whatever the case is you're seeking you will find peace solely when you seek God you'll find peace solely when you're being obedient to his will and so let's keep on going on to verse um, 19 through 20 it reads, obviously the law applies to those to whom it was given for its purposes is to keep people from having excuses. Mm, that's a big word. And to show them that the entire world is guilty before God. For no one can ever be made right with God by doing what the law commands. The law simply shows us how sinful we are. We can't depend on the law to make us saved. We can't depend on doing what, what looks all good, sounding our churchy to make us saved. Because none of that will make us saved. But if you depend on Christ, you say, how do I depend on Christ? As I talked about in the other scripture, Jesus said, those, if you love me, obey my commandments. Those who listen to me are wise. Those who obey what I say are wise. But those who listen to me but don't obey are foolish. They will have their house will collapse. So he talks about um, when the rain and the floodwaters come, those who aren't built on the solid foundation of Christ will collapse. And so if you want to be freed from that sinful nature, if you want to be freed from your destructive ways of misery and hate and, and pain and anxiety and depression, only the only way you can get that is through Jesus and him alone not through the law not by you doing all these things that sound and look good but it's by you focusing and putting all your faith and your hope and your might in Christ now let's go on to verse 21 through 22 now this is super this is super um deep oh no the next verse we're going to get into are super deep it says but now God has shown us a way to be made right with him without keeping the requirements of the law as was promised in the writing of Moses and the prophets long ago we are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ we are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ and this is true for everyone who believes no matter who we are so we have to understand this right here 
Don't be focused on doing things that, oh, Christ, oh, I, I think this is what I'm supposed to be doing. No, you need to be sure about what you're supposed to be doing. The only way you can be sure is by reading the word of God and following it. Don't just go based on what your cousin said or your mom said or your grandmother said. No, know the word of God for yourself. Don't even just go based on what your pastor said. Listen to your pastor because he is a leader and respect him. But understand for you to get your own revelation, for, you, for God to convict you on some things, you got to get into the word for you to be transformed because the pastor is supposed to be there for everybody but for God to be one on one with you you got to put some effort in and say God I am going to be focused and I am going to be all in with you I'm going to get in my word with you and so when we allow to ourselves to be led by him we will see peace start to come in we'll see joy start to trickle in every single day no matter what circumstances come around, no matter if your, your house has been taken, no matter if you've been divorced, no matter if you don't have a job, no matter if your child has died, no matter if your mother or your father has died, you will have joy no matter what because your faith is in Christ. That is what will save you. Understand, stop going to crystal, stop going to manifestation, stop going to sage, stop going to all these things of the world, all these things that will pass away because none of that stuff will save you. It may try to feel good in the moment. It may try to put a bandaid over a wound that needs something more than that it's a spiritual wound you can't put a band-aid over it something earthly that's like literally what you do when you use crystals when you use sage you're trying to make your own future you're trying to make your own will but you got to switch that around and say god no not my will be done let your will be done and his will will be done when you give him access now let's go on to verse 23 to through 25 it says <clears throat> now this part uh, we kind of already talked about it a little bit but i want i want it to be clear like this is all of us so it says for everyone has sinned i have sinned everyone has sinned we all fall short of god's glorious standard we all no matter how how high up in the ministry they are everybody has fallen short of god's standard yet God, with undeserved kindness, declares that we are righteous. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty for our sins. For God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sins. Um, for the sacrifice for sins, people are made right with God when they believed that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. This sacrifice shows that God was being fair when he held back and did not punish those who sinned in times past. And so when we look at that, this is I want to give you this really good example. It's literally like you go to school and you you spent all night partying you spent all night doing all the wrong that you could do in the world you did everything that you wanted to do every desire every sinful nature desire that you wanted to fulfill you did and then you're like oh shoot i forgot to prepare for this test i forgot to do things correctly so that i could do well on this test you get to the testing center and you try to take the test on your own you're failing you're doing everything wrong you're like oh my gosh i should have prepared i should have i should have did this and that but this is what happened while you were taking the test. There was another person sitting right next to you who had stayed up all night studying, who had stayed up years and years studying for this one test so that they could make an 100. He made an 100 on the test and went to the teacher and said, teacher, I have done so well on this test. I want to trade my score with this person. Let me get the penalty of their score of a 30% of a 2% and I'll give them my 100%. I'll take that on out of my love for them. And that is how Christ has done with us. He has taken our bad stuff. He's taken our bad grades. He's taken our bad sinful nature, our evil actions that we did against him and his people. And he has turned it for something good. He's traded it. He took our sins on the cross he was righteous he never sinned he was he was tempted to, to sin but he never sinned he never had a thought of sin he stayed righteous with God and so we got to understand okay out of undeserved kindness God extended that to me let me be obedient because he truly loves me he truly wants to see the best in me he doesn't want to see me fall he doesn't want to see me hurt so hmm, maybe he has something good he wants to give me maybe he is truly looking out for me maybe the world is lying to me up oh. But it tells us God is true. God is true. Not anything else. If the world tells you something that goes against the word of God, the world says something is right when God said it is evil. Trust God. Trust God over the world because God has been proven true. The world's still trying to figure it out and it'll be too late. You'll already be suffering with the consequence when they say, oh, it was it was bad. I'm sorry. Huh, whoops, messed up. But God has already told us what the consequence is. Now let's go on to verse 26. Verse 26 says, 
for he was looking ahead and including them in what he would do in this present time. God did this to demonstrate his righteousness for he himself is fair and just. And he declares sinners to be right in his sights when they believe in Jesus. God said, oh, I love these people so much. I don't ever want them to be separated from me. I don't ever want to see them not being in my presence. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make it so simple for them. I'm going to remove all hundred and uh, not hundred, 613 laws that they used to have to follow. And it also, uh, I want to go back really quickly. It says it shows how sim simple we are. God had to put all these parameters around to protect us because our sinful nature was just going wow. We After we sinned that one time, it was just over. We were just ready to do everything wrong. But God said, no, I'm going to make them right by, by my standard. I'm going to give them everlasting life if they would believe in my son, if they would believe and be washed by his blood because his blood is clean. His blood got 100% on the test. His blood is able to get into heaven, has all the requirements, but our blood is dirty. Our blood is not clean. At the moment we were born into this world we were born into sin so we understand our we got to switch we got to change some things up we got to change our ways and so we when we do that we will understand how just and fair god is we will understand that we deserve something else that even so we, and when we look at it look, look at it like this Jesus came on this earth and he was tempted to do wrong. He was tempted in every way. It tells us that in Hebrews, but yet he never sinned. That means that Jesus had that same nature we got. So God is going to be just and fair. He's not going to say, oh, Christ, I'm going to make it easier for you. I'm going to just give you this nature where you're not tempted to do anything wrong. I'm going to make it so easy for you so that when I say, oh, I sent my son, he was didn't sin that it was because he had the same nature, but no, God gave him the exact same nature as us. And he chose to not sin and show us that it's possible. So God isn't holding us to a standard that is impossible to meet. He has showed us how to do it, but it's up to us to be obedient to how to do it and seek him on how to do it. And so let's go on to verse 27 through 28, um, cause we're about out of time. I'm going a little over. And if y'all stand with me, look, we're gonna stay and read this word. And if you wanna soak up the word, let's just stay um, for a couple more minutes and then we'll be done with this Bible study. But let's keep Coin, verse 27 through 28. Can we boast then about that we have done anything to be accepted by God? No, because our acquittal is not based on obeying the law. It is based on faith. So we are made right with God through faith and not by obeying the law. I'm going to keep on going through verse 29 through 31. That's where we're going to stop. It says, after all, is God the God of the Jews only? Isn't he also the God of the Gentiles? Of course he is. There is only one God. There is only one God and he makes people right with himself only by faith. Well then, if we emphasize faith, does this mean that we can forget about the law? Of course not. In fact, only when we have faith do we truly fulfill the law. And so we understand, listen, listen closely. Whatever you have faith in, it will start to change your beliefs. Whatever you believe in will start to change your actions. I'm going to say it in a different way. The, whatever you have faith in will change the way that you think. Whatever you start thinking on will change the way that you act. If someone told you, oh, you're ugly, you're going to start trying to do things different. If someone told you, oh, you're, you're rich, you're going to start to try to act all like you're rich. Or someone told you you're poor, whatever the case is. However you start to think and you have faith in certain things, you'll start to act in. So if your faith is in Christ, if your faith is centered and rooted in his foundation, you will obey him. You will simply say, Lord, I accept you into my life and I want you to be the, the head of my life, Lord of my life. I'm tired of being in a destructive, uh, I'm trying to live in a destructive life where I'm miserable, where I'm having so many problems in my life. God, I'm ready to just surrender it all. I'm ready to give it all. I just got to tell you, if you're ready to do that, do it. There's nobody stopping you. There's no one stopping you. Get Start today. Start right now. There's no excuse that we have to say, well, I, I can't do it. No, God says Jew or Gentile. We all have access to God through faith. We all can be made right. So this is the last statement. I just want you to understand that our purpose in life is to go out and love as Christ did. And it's to go out and be obedient to Christ in every way. That way, when people look at us, they look at God. And when they look at God, they're able to see his love. They're able to see the joy that he gives. And so we want to point people directly to him, not to ourselves. So if if this has been for you, if this is something that you've been needing, um, and you've just been lacking under, like having faith in God and just trusting in God, trust him. 
trust him. I can just tell you, just try it. Just try it and tell me if it don't work, but I can tell you it will work. So there won't be, a, it won't work. Just try it. It doesn't hurt to try to say, God, I want to put my faith in you and go a hundred percent. Don't go 50% and say, oh, it didn't work. Go a hundred percent and see God show up and see God multiply that a hundred percent into something tenfold to where you couldn't have even imagined. You couldn't have even seen that coming. So just stay consistent, stay diligent and stay focused on God. And I promise, I promise, I promise I'm a living testimony <clears throat> to what God can do in your life. <coughs> Excuse me. To what God can do in your life if you're obedient to him. So um, I just want to say a prayer over everyone over this live. If anyone has just been struggling and or just don't know Christ like that, you want to get closer with Christ, I encourage you to read your Bible. Read Matthew. Start in Matthew. It's really hard for people to read the beginning of the Bible and then understand who Jesus is. Read Matthew. Read the New Testament. And then you can go to the Old Testament. It's history. It is still about the same God. But to learn about Christ, read the New Testament. And you will see what do I need to do and start doing it. So I just want to say a prayer over you. If that's been you and you want to get your relationship closer with God, if you've just been struggling, Trust me, brother or sister, I understand you and I, I truly feel for you and I love you so much and I know God loves you that much. So we're just going to say a prayer together and we're, we're, it says we're two or more gathered. There he is in the midst. We got 303 people on here. So we are all here together in agreement and we're going to pray to God and we're going to pray and say, Lord, let your will be done. So let us go ahead and pray. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day that you have given us. Father, you've given us chance after chance after chance. I thank you God that you have never given up on us that father you never just want us to to go and do things that are destructive but father you always help us to do things that are constructive and will build us up and not tear us down it will build our neighbor up and not tear them down so father I pray for just every soul who was on this live father I pray that their hearts be changed that their minds be set back on you that father if there's any misery this destruction anything going on in their life God that is not of you I rebuke it in the name of Jesus Jesus, and you have to leave by go back to hell in the name of Jesus. I rebuke you, devil, and all demons that are inside of people in the name of Jesus. You are no longer, you no longer have power over this person. And I pray that, that God, you would just come in and just be the light that leads them, that you be the thing that resonates in their heart, that there will be no darkness that can even enter them because you're so bright. So, Father, I pray that you will forgive us of every sin that we've done, known and unknown, of, of whether or not it affected us or even affected other people, Father. But I pray that it be be just washed away, God. I pray that we'll be cleansed by the blood of Jesus, God. And I pray that we'll go out and show love and remain obedient to your word, God. Thank you, Lord, for changing our hearts, changing our minds, and changing our actions, God, through your word. And it is in Jesus' mighty name that I pray. Amen. All right, you guys, thank you so much for coming out to this live. Uh, we're going to be doing this again next week. So if you got your word, come on down and we're going to get into the word of God together. But I love you all so much. And um, I pray that God's hands just continue to be on your life. So 